Are you tired of being stuck in low MMR? Then this is the video for you. Here I have 10 very actionable practical tips how to improve your play, especially if you're a hell player, but this should also be useful for people in Guardian, Crusader, or perhaps even Archon. So let's start with number one. Focus on the basics. If you're a low MMR player, you should not focus on things like the niceties of thread switching. You know, these are minor optimization things that you can do later on, but especially if you're in Herald, focus on the basics instead. So what are the basics? Well, one example is number two, use hotkeys. Now, Dota has lots and lots of hotkeys. So you have a hotkey, for example, selecting your own hero. If you ever lose your hero, I don't know, you may be checking out something on the other side of the map, you can just return to your hero with that hotkey. Or let's say I want to send my courier to the secret shop. Now I could click here, select my courier, and then send him to the secret shop here. That works fine, but there's a much easier way of doing it. I will just select my courier and then press the hotkey to go to the secret shop. Now you might say, I can just use this button down here, this selects my courier. Then I can do things like uh, uh, deliver items if I had any, or I can press these buttons, I can go to the secret shop, I can retrieve items from stash, things like that. But this is a very bad habit. There's lots of things you can only do with your mouse, and you should reserve your mouse hand for that. Use your other hand to use all these hotkeys. And because you don't want to build bad habits, this is something you should do right away. You should learn right away how to use hotkeys. And once you're comfortable with the hotkeys, you're going to be much faster and much more efficient. Number three, you want to limit your hero pool. This will, first of all, help you increase your MMR faster because you're going to be playing heroes that you're actually good at. But this will also help you focusing on basics more. If you play heroes that you're very familiar with, you don't have to focus too much on hero-specific things and you can focus more on the fundamental things that apply to all heroes. Number four, learn to last hit and to deny. So obviously you only get gold if you actually get the last hit on a creep. So especially in the laning phase, it is very important to be able to get last hits consistently. Obviously your opponent is gonna to try to distract you from that. But that is why we need to practice and the first step is just sort of practice uh, in demo mode here this you can do with every any hero you can do it even while you're searching for a game so it's a great thing to warm up and you can even you know, buy realistic starting items here and help you in having the kind of damage values that you have in game as well it's also specific last hit trainer but there you don't get to choose your items so I actually prefer this method of uh, practicing last hitting. And denying is also very important. If you deny a creep, your opponent is not going to be able to get last hit. They won't get gold for it. And also they will only get half the experience of that creep that uh, would no normally give. You can only deny start denying creeps when they're below 50%. So if, if I a click a normal creep that's above 50% and nothing will happen. Um, but once it's low, I can... We kill it myself and deny my opponent golden experience. If you do want to use the last hit trainer, it's here under the learn tab, and then you have to go to the third page here, and this is last sitting. And after you choose a hero, you can start trying to, to last sit and deny. You get points for, for last sits and for denies. And you can practice a bit here. But it's really not I, th I think it's not as good as just using a regular demo mode because you can't choose your items, you don't have abilities available. So I prefer just using demo mode. Number five, learn how to cancel animations. So each hero's attack consists of two phases. First is the wind up phase, and in that phase, an attack is released. And then after that, there is a downswing. You see this staff gets swung down here and then she starts attacking again. And during the downswing phase, you want to actually move around and do stuff. So I'm attacking a hero. You want to attack here and then move a little bit. Attack and then move a little bit. Obviously against this enchantress, every attack is going to be very slow. But I do this like here. I do this. I do this. I do this. And this is if I want to move closer to him or maybe he's chasing me 
Then when we attack here, move back, attack, move back, attack, move back. And this way I can use this useless time during the downswing to do something productive. Same can also be done for spells. So it's also a wind up phase. And during this, you don't want to cancel, but then there's a downswing, and during that time, you can cancel and do something else like attack. And this way, you can just use your time more efficiently. There's something you should constantly be doing. You should basically never just stand still and attack. Number six, you want to push out waves. This is super important because wave farm is much, much more eff effective than any other kind of farm. A, a single creep wave at the start of the game gives you about one and a half times as much as a large camp. It's much easier to actually kill. So you should always try to push out waves. Pushing out waves is not only good for your gold, it also gives you vision of the map and it also forces your opponents to react. Otherwise their towers are going to take some damage. So you should always focus primarily on pushing out waves and then jungle farm should be a supplementary source of income, not the main thing. And you can also push out waves to your support player, which is especially also why uh, playing supports that can push out waves is uh, very advisable, especially in no normal games. The only time you should uh, refrain from pushing waves is if, it, is if it's too dangerous, but then you can still do things like uh, send illusions or summon to try to push out a wave and uh, do it without risking your own life but however you do it you have to push out waves otherwise you just can't win dota and then number seven you have to take objectives this is obviously how you win dota at first you push out the waves and then you can take towers now, obviously if the game is even it's hard to actually take towers but whenever you're in a team fight you should always ask yourself can i take objectives your first thought after winning a team fight should not be farm the jungle, it should be can I take towers? Can we take Roche maybe even? Or maybe even we can we go high ground? But in any case, you should always try to take objectives. And this is also another reason why pushing waves is so important because if the waves aren't pushed, you can't take objectives generally, except for Roshan. So even if you like if your waves are like pushed here and here and here. And you win a fight over there if you're radiant. Who cares? Because you can't actually take towers because by the time you pushed out these waves, the enemy team is probably going to have respawned already. At the same time, though, don't be stubborn. Like, if you determine the best course of action is for your team to push these towers, but your teammates don't cooperate, well, sometimes you can't push objectives. Be judicious on, on when you can actually push objectives when you can't. Another important and fundamental thing to do is to buy enough region. So at the start, this usually means that you buy two sets of region. So like a tango and a self or two tangos. And then depending on the kind of fury you're playing, you might also want to get maybe some mangoes, maybe a clarity. Uh, but don't overdo it with the region at the start. Because when you're out of region, you can just buy more region later. Like right now, I am full HP, full mana, but I'm almost out of region. I know probably in the lane I'm going to take some more damage. So at this stage, it's the perfect time to, be to buy some more region with your carrier. Buy like an extra tango, maybe an extra salve, maybe an extra mango, so that you can keep laning effectively. You don't want to be in a situation where you're super low and you only then buy the region because then you can't do anything in lane for like a minute or two. This is very bad. A situation you should uh, absolutely avoid by uh, shipping out region in advance. Number nine, buy wards. Observer wards are free and they give you so much vision, especially at night. Uh, it's just very important to have vision available whenever possible. If you're in low MR games, you can probably just place them in fairly obvious positions and you're going to be fine. By the same token though, de-warding should not be that difficult. Swiftly. Sentry wards cost only 50 gold. And if you get a de-ward, you get, depending on the stage of the game, two, three, four, five times as much gold back, plus a bunch of experience. So you want to do a lot of de-warding. Basically, these sentry wards should never hit 10. These observer wards should never hit 4. 
should be constantly buying those and placing them on the map. And don't worry if you don't know the exact best position to place them. Uh, just one little trick you can do if you want to yes. deward a cliff ward. You can place the sentry ward further away. And then use a spell to get vision of high ground. Like this. Or you could also use your carrier. Maybe I'm, maybe that might be a ward here or maybe here. So we'll place the sentry like this. And then with our curry we get the high ground vision and see if there's a ward here. This way you can get uh, more wards with one sentry. And finally number 10, that is buy detection. This is super important if you have any sort of invis hero in the enemy team or if they have a glimmer cape or shadow blade or an item like that. You have to have detection then. There's three forms of detection. The first one is sentry wards. We talked about them already. These are great to have see even heroes are coming in and be able to react uh, to them. But then there's also dust of appearance, which is a great reactive item. So if you wanna you wanna gank this uh, bounty hunter, having a dust is great because then he's gonna be dusted even when he runs away, and it uh, yes. works for a good amount of time. And then the last one is a gem. This one is the most powerful form of protection because it's permanent, but it's very expensive, 900 gold, and also it drops when you die. But it's a great uh, way of both seeing Invis heroes. However, it's not the most ranged, so if you want to see Invis heroes that might initiate you, Sentry Wards is uh, still a very strong option. But this is especially great for dewarding. You can just use spells to get high ground vision, see enemy wards. Or you can use your carrier. This is great to sort of clear your own side of the map from wards. Great item to buy when you have uh, map control, when you're the stronger team at the moment. But in general, you should mostly rely on sentry wards and on dust for detection. It's very important to buy detection not just on supports, but also on cores. Especially if you're melee here that wants to sort of jump in. You want to be able to have detection on your own. Because your supports might not always be around, they might die early on in the fight. So you need to have your own detection, especially if you're a melee core. Now in the very late game, when you have lots of very strong items, you can no longer afford to carry detection. But if you have to sell a lesser item, like let's say a Bracer for example, to carry detection, do it. It's way more important to have detection against Indus heroes than to have a minor stat item. So, these are my 10 tips that should help you get out of Herald. I'll soon be making another video where I'm giving another 10 tips to get out of Guardian. And if you don't want to miss that, remember to subscribe and ring the bell so that you can notify it when I post the next video. And there's also some nice videos here on the screen you can click on. And Obelisk Villain, I'll see you there.